This scenery is wonderful. Surely enough to convince anyone to become a wanderer. There are leaves around, and I know just the tune to accompany them, if you wish to hear it. Wherever in this world I roam, I carry memories of my home. This blade, it is the last link I have to the land of my birth. Time to go. May the god of animal I really envy you. those with the god's eye. Wolf songs here are all so wise. songs here are all so wise.
Follow the wind. Taking a stroll in the middle of a downpour certainly rouses the spirit. But it's best to dry your clothes as soon. Rise. a smile to my face. Time to go. I will protect you. I must leave no stone on Wheel of Life. Fallen leaves. Adorn my knights. Wind strike. Come on. 
Preserve. Wow. Wow. Leave it all to me. Wheel of life. As one with wind and cloud. Orders given. Orders received. Wind strike. Time to go. Clouds hide. The birds call. Wind strike. Yeah! 
Fallen leaves adorn my night. Help with? Yes. I'm afraid that I have another task that requires your assistance. The Adventurer's Guild has recently received a commission directly from the Tenryo Commission. The assignment is both urgent and dangerous. After assessing the assignment, the Guild has concluded that seasoned adventurers are required. Naturally, you came to mind. <laughs> Just another day on the job for us! Allow me to explain. The Tenryo Commission recently issued an arrest warrant for a young Oni by the name of Arataki Ito. An Oni? You mean those big, tough-looking guys with horns on their heads? That's correct. This particular Oni is quite vocal and audacious, so he already has quite the reputation on the streets. That said, he has never been caught up in major trouble of any kind. So it came as a surprise to learn that he has recently been accused of stealing things, and sometimes even whisking away the people themselves. But it doesn't end there. When the Tenryo Commission dispatched a Doshin to apprehend him, he assaulted the Doshin before making a getaway with his accomplices. So let Paimon guess. It's up to us to bring the Sony in! No problemo! This does sound like a job for the Traveler! She'll be back with the I have complete confidence you will succeed. However, please exercise caution. This Oni also happens to hold a vision, and is the leader of an organization known as the Arataki Gang. Hmm, you're right. We have no idea what we'll be up against. Better play it safe. We are still investigating Arataki Ito's potential motives behind these incidents, as well as his current whereabouts. 
but please ask around in the streets as well. There will likely be others more familiar with Ito's circumstances than I am, who can provide you with useful information. Thank you. I will await your return. Ad Astra Avisosk. Taki Ito? Yeah, I've heard of the guy. Word is he did something monumentally stupid, then ran off before they could catch him. And to be completely honest, I was a little surprised when I first heard it. Okay, well, I mean, not that surprised. Wait, you mean he already had a bad reputation? Well, no, not exactly. <coughs> He's just very overbearing in everything he does big and brash and always making a ruckus. So, on the one hand, he's a larger-than-life kind of guy. But on the other hand, he's emotionally volatile. When he's in a good mood, he's as high as a kite. But when he gets upset, he gets completely enraged. I don't personally see him as a bad guy, but I guess I wouldn't put it past him to get all riled up and lose control. Hmm... You know, I'm afraid that I'm not too sure myself. <coughs> I keep a pretty good eye on what's happening in the city, and as far as I can tell, he just idles the days away. When someone asks for it, he's willing to lend a helping hand, but other than that, he's just out making a scene with the kids on the street or his gang. <sighs> if I had to guess, his lack of income finally drove him to do something more drastic to make ends meet. I'm afraid that I don't have much else to tell you. He tends to spend his time with people a little more lively than myself. Perhaps you could try asking around some more. Okay, thanks! Taki Ito? Hmm, oh yeah. I heard about that whole thing. I'm sure it must have been a mix-up on the Tenryo Commission's end. He could never do anything so dastardly. Huh? How can you be so sure? Is he really as trustworthy as all that? <laughs> no, perhaps you misunderstand me. When I said he could never do anything dastardly, I meant... He literally doesn't have what it takes. Mm, maybe a story will explain it better. So, he used to spend a lot of time playing rock, paper, scissors and hide and seek with the kids on the streets. Kids, being kids, aren't exactly the most difficult to outsmart. I'm sure you can see what I'm getting at here. He used to lose all the time, sometimes catastrophically. <laughs> Purpose, though, right? No, not at all. The one time I saw him win, he started jumping around and yelling, I won! I finally won! I'm unbeatable! And so on. Then he took the kid's candy as his prize and ate it right there in front of him. Ugh, that's just plain wrong. He did take it way too far that time. The poor kid started crying, so I stepped in and gave Ito a scolding. He was pretty quick to admit that he was fully in the wrong, and it wasn't long before the kid had stopped crying and was laughing and playing again as if nothing had ever happened. In fact, the children quite like playing with him because he's always serious about the stakes and never throws a game on purpose. So, I suppose what I'm trying to say is... Is a guy who can't even beat kids at a children's game really going to be capable of these kinds of diabolical deeds? Huh. He doesn't sound like a bad guy at all. In fact, he kind of sounds like a man of integrity. Yes, my thoughts exactly. Still, the Tenryo Commission's evidence against him is supposed to be irrefutable. So, I'm not trying to condone his actions or anything. If he really has messed up big time, then he should face the consequences just like anyone else. Thanks for the info. We'll keep asking. 
sneak around. Arataki Ito. <laughs> of course I know him. We've been trying to apprehend him recently. We know he's already left Inazuma City, but with no clues to follow, we have no choice but to commission others for help, including the Adventurer's Guild. Captain says that Arataki Ito hadn't done anything seriously bad before, so it seems pretty strange. Paimon's curious. Is there any evidence of all this stuff he's accused of? Yes, of course. Otherwise, we'd never have put so many people on the case. For starters, most thieves will try to devise a way to conceal their identity. But for an Oni, the horns are a dead giveaway. I mean, the whole city could have recognized it was him. At first, he was just one of our suspects. But when we went to investigate, he personally confessed to everything and started trying to provoke the officers. What's most frustrating is that he then managed to escape along with his entire gang. He must have been planning the whole thing right from the start. Of course he did. Whether material or psychological, there is plenty of evidence either way. He's never had a mora to his name his entire life, and he's never kept down a real job. Word is that he also takes care of someone in his gang, and that the burden of it takes quite the toll on him. After scrounging for a living all these years, maybe he thought that being the bad guy would be an easier ride. As for his psychological motives... It's a bit embarrassing to talk about, but we... <clears throat> confiscated his vision during the Vision Hunt Decree. At the time, Arataki Ito put up quite a fight. It took a huge amount of manpower and resources, and in the end we had to enlist the help of Kujo Sara to finally secure his vision. The Vision Hunt was a mistake, but we never expected that he would go to such extreme lengths to take revenge on us. He does sound a little unstable. Just like people have been saying. If the two of you are able to capture Arataki Ito, please bring him straight here. We'll handle him from there. Thanks for all the info. Have we really run out of exciting hey. cases? Too bad we still don't know where he could have run off to. We already got word on the street, so maybe it's time to talk to a real specialist. Paimon remembers that there's a detective agency here in Inazuma. Maybe we can try asking there. Hello, we'd like to ask some questions about Arataki Ito. Oh, him again. Sure, I have answers. We've already done some investigating for the Tenryo Commission. But first, do you have enough Moro to cover the fee? I've heard all about your travels. After everything you've been through, I'm sure you understand the way these sorts of things work. About here. A one-off payment of 397,000 mora, up front. Plus a further 5% of your Adventures Guild remuneration as my commission, if Arataki Ito is successfully caught and brought to justice. Whoa! That's crazy expensive! How did you even come up with the price that high? <laughs> Hold on. I wasn't finished. It just so happens the initial fee has already been paid in full by the Tenryo Commission. All you'll need to pay is the small commission fee. And, as for that amount, I'll settle things with the Adventures Guild once we have Ito. So, from the way I see it, you guys are getting a pretty nice deal. Now then, to give you the full picture in this case, we must first recount a well-known Inazuman fairy tale. A long, long time ago, in a village lost to time, there lived a Crimson Oni and a Blue Oni. They were the best of friends. The Crimson Oni looked fierce, but was gentle like the humans. The Blue Oni looked human, but was reclusive, like an Oni. 
The Crimson Oni wished to befriend the humans, but they were scared and threw beans at him whenever he came near. <laughs> so the Blue Oni said to the Crimson Oni, Aka, I'll cause trouble in the village. You'll come and stop me. Then the humans will accept you. As planned, the Crimson Oni chased the Blue Oni away. The Crimson Oni's deeds spread throughout the land, and people finally accepted him. But when the Crimson Oni went to tell the Blue Oni the good news, he was gone and left only a letter behind. I went traveling. Don't come find me or they'll treat you as a naughty little Oni. But don't worry about me. No matter where I go, we'll always be friends. I suppose the blue oni simply disappeared, never to be seen again. Only the crimson oni remain now. Oh, but what if the blue oni was just an innocent little kid? Of course it does. Otherwise, I wouldn't go through all the trouble of telling it. One interpretation is that the story is actually broadly based on historical events and that Arataki Ito is, in fact, a descendant of the Crimson Oni. What I'm trying to tell you is that the Oni have sacrificed a lot in the past in order to finally integrate themselves into human society. But there are still some volatile personality traits in the Oni bloodline. Every generation of Oni inherits these traits, so while Arataki Ito has never been known to commit a wrongful act in the past, can we ever completely rule out the possibility of him one day allowing this side of him to take over? But how could he do that? After the Blue Oni's sacrifice? That would be such a betrayal! That's a very old story. Nobody knows how long it's been since the Blue Oni disappeared. We can only assume that they have long since died out, in which case, it would be quite a stretch to say it still counts as a betrayal at this point. Besides, the suspect has already confessed. What is there left to discuss? According to my investigation, he was headed southwest. I would bet he's already made it to Yashiori Island by now. The Tenryo Commission is unable to enter territory controlled by Songonomia troops. No doubt that's the reason Arataki Ito chose to flee in that direction. Don't mention it. I'm just doing my duty. Wait, Paimon still has a question. If Arataki Ito has given in to his bad side, won't that mean he's extra mean and violent now? I could only assume so. Judging from his previous bouts, he is a skilled fighter with a lot of brute strength. Whether or not you'll be able to handle him, that I do not know. Ah, yes. Now that you mention it, I seem to recall that Arataki Ito is allergic to beans. In fact, all Oni will avoid beans, but especially Ito. I heard that just touching a bean is enough to incapacitate him. If you could weaken him a bit by triggering his allergies, perhaps you'd have better luck subduing him. Right! Knowing our target's weakness will make things a whole lot easier! It just so happens that I have a bag of beans right here. I was planning to use them to make some porridge, but I think you will find a better use for them. Of course, I will charge the Adventurer's Guild a fair and reasonable rate for the beans. Sneaky! But also, thanks! Let's head to Yashiori Island and start looking for Ito! Taking a stroll in the middle of a downpour certainly rouses the spirit. 
But it's best to dry your clothes as soon as possible after the rain stops. Follow the wind. <laughs> Time to go. As a dutiful maid would. According to Detective Sango, Ito should be somewhere around. Footprints! Uh, Let's see where they lead. There's a camp here. But nothing stands out as particularly noteworthy. Let's keep moving forward. Life goes on. Be him? Is that Arataki Ito? He doesn't seem to be looking. 
walking this way. Perfect. Let's try the beans Detective Sango gave us. It'll save a lot of hassle if we can avoid a fight. D d don't don't be alarmed. It's just my uh, uh my allergies acting up. I've got it under control. It's all right. I got this. I just 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 gotta tough it out. <laughs> just, I, I can take it. I can take it. <laughs> Who am I kidding? I gotta catch my breath here. Whatever it is you want, it's gonna have to wait. I need a moment. <sighs> Need a moment. <sighs> Woo, that's that's better. That sure took a lot out of me, though. <laughs> hey, why'd you have to be so mean, huh? Surprise attacking me like that. Oh, I get it. So you're here to bring me in. How in the world did you find me all the way out here? Whatever. If you think I'm going back with you, you can forget it. I'd walk away if I were you. I pack a mean punch, you know. I don't want to hurt any regular folks like you. That's pretty big cat considering all the beans we have. Yep, that's right. Me. All by myself. Nobody else. As boss of the Arataki gang, I gotta nab a little food and drink when we're running low. That's only natural, right? Yeah, but nabbing people? That's taking it a bit far, don't you think? Uh, not when their families will pay good mora to see them again. Easy pickings. And the extra mora means I can, uh, uh, give some to my gang to spend on themselves. <laughs> hey, what's with all the questions? Like I said, I'm not going back with you, so stop wasting everybody's time. No way, mister. We've accepted a commission to bring you back. What did you say, little one? Go on, say it to my face. Uh, w well, mostly she took a commission to bring you back. Looks like you aren't gonna let this drop. In that case, we... Uncle Ito! <sighs> Don't run now. Careful or you'll fall. What's taking you so long? You said we were gonna have a beetle fight today. Come on, you promised. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's right. Still going ahead. But but you see, uh, I've been out here for ages, and I still can't find a beetle that I like. So, just give Uncle Ito a little more time, okay? Huh? Who are they? Are they your friends? Uh, yeah, that's right. I told them not to come, but what can I say? They were just too worried about me. <laughs> it's because of a little thing called... Uh, prestige. Yeah, because of all the prestige Uncle Ito has. Huh? What are you talking about? 
Come on, just play along. Leave the kid out of this. Uh, Uncle Ito, you don't look so good. You look like you're about to fall over. <laughs> That's because Uncle Ito bumped his noggin on a tree branch while looking for a beetle. Uh oh. <laughs> it's all good though. These horns are rock solid. Okay. If you say so, Granny and I will keep heading back now. Don't be too long. Uh, yep, I'll be right there. Hope you're ready to lose today. Who were those people? The old lady was Granny Oni. She's the one who took me in and raised me. And the kid's name is Daisuke. I, I took him in just a while back. They're both like family to me. They escaped with me out this way, along with my boys from the Arataki gang. If I didn't bring him with me, the Tenryo Commission would be knocking on their doors for sure. Right. But if you care about them so much, then you shouldn't have done all that stuff that made them worry about you in the first place. I... Uh... uh listen, how about we make a deal? You two let me go wrap things up with Daisuke, and once we're done battling beetles, the two of us will settle things with a duel. If you win, I'll come quietly. You can take me back to Inazuma City, and you won't hear a peep out of me. Why? Because I'm an Oni of my word. I'll just tell little Daisuke that my friends and I need to step outside for a moment. That way you won't worry. Cool? Hmm. Well, what should we do? There is the kid to consider. Oh, it's on! I like your style. <laughs> All right, but first things first. I need to find an Oni Kabuto to battle with. I've been looking here for ages and haven't found myself a winner yet, so it's time to try somewhere else. Come with me. Saves you worrying that I might skedaddle. You guys have seen Oni Kabuto out in the wild, right? Even though they might look menacing on the outside, they're big softies on the inside. Most of the time, they're just sitting there doing nothing. But let me tell ya, once the Oni Kabuto start fighting, ho ho ho, they won't let anything get in their way. The grand game of beetle fighting is a match where your beetle tries to flip the other beetle onto its back. Hey, it's not just some kid's game, okay? There's way more to it than that. I have taken part in more beetle fights than you would believe. At least 800. I may have even crossed the thousand mark by this point. Anyway, after a while, you can tell a beetle's fighting potential just by looking at its shape, size, and the patterns on its body. But it's not just about all the physical stuff. Oh no, your Oni Kabuto's gotta be in the right head space as well. If it's not up for a fight or doesn't have the guts, well, then it's game over. <laughs> Boy, are you too lucky you ran into me. When it comes to beetles, I'm the expert that the experts go to. I'll show you all you need to know. But we're not the ones that will be playing. We're just here to keep an eye on you. Oh, yeah. yeah anyway, not a problem. You two might think I'm just tooting my own horns here, but just you wait. I'll make you a beetle expert in no time. And by the way, that kid has one tough beetle. We can't underestimate it. You have to find a real lean, mean beetle warrior. Okay, so he's not the sharpest horn on the Oni. Okay, let me see. Mm. Ah, there. Let's head to that hill. I'll bet my bottom mora we're gonna find some major league Oni Kabuto hiding out there. Just our luck. Well, hopefully that'll scare all the wimpy beetles. Oh, darn it, they're all gone. Let's hop down from here and take a look. My gut's telling me that they're... <gasps> look, you see all those purple things? It's a whole pile of Oni Kabuto. <laughs> now that's what I'm talking about. 
Huh? Oh, what the? Ah, oh, no, not lavender melons. Ah. <clears throat> well, even a pro like myself can make a mistake from time to time. It's okay, just gotta roll with the punches. Let's try somewhere else. This is the one. This is the one. <laughs> See? As long as you're in my company, you're guaranteed to find yourself an Oni Kabuto. Yeah, it's on the smaller side, but uh, size isn't everything in a beetle fight. Just let the expert explain, okay? What smaller beetles lack in strength, they make up for in agility. They usually got a whole bunch of sick moves just ready to whip out when the right moment comes. Listen, you can never see a beetle's true energy until it's in the ring. It might look a bit young and docile, but that's got its advantages. Haven't you ever heard the saying, don't judge a book by its cover? Young beetles that have never fought before always go all out in their first fight. <laughs> Older beetles that have already been through the wars tend to just cower in the corner the moment they see a strong opponent. Hey, didn't I say not to worry? Come on, just have a little faith, would ya? My experience is telling me that this Onikabuto was spawned to be a champion. Right here! Look what Paimon found! If we're gonna battle some beetles, then Paimon wants in! It's not like we have anything else to do. When you hopped down, Paimon flew off somewhere else nearby and found this one! What do you think, Ito? It's big and strong and looks like a real fighter! It matches everything you said about a good fighter beetle! But the one you guys found must be way... way... bigger. Oh, uh, uh, you got some experience catching beetles too, huh? Nope. This is the first one Paimon's ever caught. Well, looks like you got a real knack for this. You'll be a fellow beetle fighting expert in no time. I mean, not as good as me, but, <laughs> but still. Oh, so overall, not that good then. Uh, anyway, great. With both your beetle and mine, I can tell this will finally be the one. This time, I'm gonna win for sure. Well, uh, <clears throat> you know, that's that's just life, man. There are so many people in this world who are talented, uh, passionate, but it's no guarantee that things will go their way. So many unrelated things have to come together at once in just the right way to make victory happen. Uh, there's this word that really sums it up nicely, actually. It's, a uh, coincidence. As in pure luck? Huh. Guess it makes no difference whether we have Paimon's beetle or not, then. Might as well just... Uh, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's not do anything rash here, you know. I think both of these fine beetles have a shot at winning. Let's just hang on to them and give them both a try. A true warrior never leaves a good beetle behind. <laughs> anyway, uh, time to head back and get this show started. Man, I am psyched for this. Woo! Let's go.
didn't feel that. Orders given. Orders received. Out of the frying pan, into the fire! Eat this! Fries. Finally, you're back! Can we start our beetle fight now? Yeah, sure thing, buddy. But you better watch out. I brought a real winner back this time. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm not scared of your beetle. Go, go, stripey ghost! I've got this fight in the bag. Let's go, nimble ninja! Come on, you can take him, little guy. <laughs> That's right. Finish it. My seventh loss in a row. <laughs> Stripey Ghost is invincible. Even Uncle Ito can't beat him. I won't forget this. I'll beat you next time, I swear. All right, Paimon, you're up. Time to give Crimson Cyclone a shot. Maybe it'll end this losing streak of mine. All right, go get him, Crimson Cyclone! Whoa, that one looks ultra strong. But it's still no match for you, Stripey. <laughs> All right, little guy. Use your super diamond tornado! No. I can't believe it. I lost. Yay! We won! Ha! I knew Crimson Cyclone would be the best! Boy, did that one put up a fight. Woo! It wiped the floor with Stripey Ghost. <laughs> I know a real beetle trainer when I see one. Way to kick some beetle butt, partner. <laughs> see? Paimon's got real talent. Of course, Crimson Cyclone has to take some of the credit, too. Oh, right. Yeah, now that the beetle fighting's over and all. Hmm? This is for you, Daisuke. Huh? For me? You're really giving it to me? Go ahead, take it, Daisuke. When we finally get back to the city, you can show it off to all your friends. But... will we ever be able to go back? Of course we will. Trust me. I never go back on my word. Anyway, I got some things I gotta discuss with my friends here. Uh, go play with Granny for a while, would ya? <laughs> There's a good boy. Good. The kid doesn't suspect a thing. You're from the Tinryo Commission, aren't you? I bet you're here to capture Uncle Ito. Huh? Hey, didn't I tell you? They're my friends. Uh, in fact, they're they're in the gang. <laughs> We're practically family. That's not true. I already know everyone in your little gang, but I've never seen these two before. Uncle Ito didn't do anything wrong. Don't take him away. And not only did he not do anything wrong, he also saved my life! He's not a bad guy! Hey, uh, some things we don't tell the outsiders, remember? Uh, how should I explain? 
I'm a real lousy liar. Ito, sometimes you need to just say what you have to say. Uh, don't worry about us. <sighs> I guess. Thanks, Granny. Seems I can't hide it anymore. Come with me. I'll explain everything. I'll be honest with you. This thing the Tenryo Commission is investigating, with someone going around taking people and their possessions, it wasn't me. Any of it. I have my own reasons for lying about it, and I really didn't want to get innocent people caught up in this while I'm still trying to solve the real problem here. I'm the same as you. I just want to avoid conflict at all costs. But it's just not worth it if someone gets hurt. So why in the world would you say that you're the culprit? Maybe you don't know because you're outlanders, but it all started a long, long time ago with the story of the Crimson Oni and the Blue Oni. Hold on a second. If you're talking about that fairy tale, we've heard that one already. Oh, so you already know. Well, that makes things a whole lot easier. So, is the story from the fairy tale really true? Everything about the fate of the Oni is true. The Blue Oni chose exile, and the Crimson Oni stayed behind. But the other details uh, aren't historically accurate. Fairy tales are nice stories, but there's something they leave out. It's a little thing called the cold, hard truth. The Inazuma of long ago was a dangerous place. If you wanted the Raiden Shogun's protection, you had to have a good relationship with the humans. The Oni are a proud kind, so it wasn't easy for them to ask others for acceptance. Over time, the Oni eventually split into two factions. The Crimson Oni were friendly with the humans, but the Blue Oni? They were more stubborn and insisted on keeping to their own. Hyman thought you were two different species. So really, you're all one family? Yep, that's right. There's no real difference between us. We just paint our horns different colors to show which side we belong to. Because humans were still wary of Oni at the time. The Crimson Oni always hoped to find a way to live in peace with the humans, but the Blue Oni kept clashing with them. Humans didn't see a difference between Crimson and Blue Oni. All they knew was that Oni were hard to get along with. If things were to continue that way, the Oni were never going to get along with humans. And so, the most revered leaders of the Crimson and Blue Oni decided to resolve it once and for all. Over drinks, they swore an oath. The Blue Oni would play the role of Evil Oni to help the Crimson Oni integrate into human society. But the Blue Oni's leader gave two conditions. Huh? What were they? First, the Oni must abandon any prejudice they held against humanity. Every Oni was to accept humans in their heart before the humans accepted them. Oni were not to use their strength to mistreat humans, but were also not to stand for mistreatment against themselves. Second, the Crimson Oni were to integrate with human society, but not by trying to please the humans. The Oni were to embrace their own honest characters, their surging tempers, and their awesome strength to win respect from the humans. In other words, they were to carry on the Oni bloodline while also protecting our Oni pride. After choosing exile, the number of blue Oni began to dwindle, until eventually, they disappeared altogether. Since I first heard the story of the blue and crimson Oni as a kid, ugh, I've heard it countless times in my life. Not once did I ever imagine that the blue Oni clan had actually survived. So you're saying the real culprit was a descendant of the blue Oni? That's right. Most people don't pay attention to the color of an Oni's horns. They probably don't even know that Blue Oni exist. But nothing gets by the Arataki gang. At the scene of the crime, they saw an Oni with different color horns than mine. Still, it would be strange if the culprit really was a descendant of the Blue Oni. I can't bring myself to accept it. Exactly. They would give up their life before abandoning their pride. I've always respected the Blue Oni for the sacrifice they made. I know the aspirations my ancestors had for the future of all Oni. Our pride does not allow for any wrongdoing. You don't steal from other people. You don't harm other people, period. My guess is that the Blue Oni was tricked or forced into it somehow. But uh, I don't have any evidence. That's right. If I didn't step in, 
The Tenryo Commission would have definitely caught them by now. But what does Daisuke have to do with any of this? He said that you saved him so he knows your story, right? He was the one I managed to save from the Ronin after I sent them running from the scene. He was off playing somewhere when they came by and ransacked his house. By the time he came back, his parents had been taken. The whole reason I'm in this is to help this kid find his mom and dad again. I never wanted to tell you any of this. <laughs> my original plan was to knock you both out and take my family to hide somewhere else. There's more to this than just one blue Oni. There's a dangerous group behind everything that's been going on. I didn't want to get anyone else caught up in this mess. That's everything. The whole story. If you don't believe me and want to drag me back to Inazuma City, then I'm going to fight you with all I've got. But if you're willing to believe me, then please, give me a little time. Once I find the Blue Oni, I'll turn the both of us in. Yep, I'm on too. Just treat it like we're here to keep an eye on you. So you... <laughs> all right. I knew you'd be reasonable. I, <laughs> I knew it. I was thinking right from the start. These two fine folks, they're just out here in the pursuit of truth and justice, man. <laughs> yeah, we are gonna get along just great. Well, I should tell you, though, things could get a little dangerous, so uh, be ready for anything. <laughs> uh, don't say that I didn't warn you. <laughs> don't worry about us. We're seasoned adventurers. All right, then our first job is to investigate where this blue Oni is hiding out. There's a victim of his that saw him up close, currently taking refuge at Songonomiya's camp. I figure we can start by talking to him. Yo, you must be Masato. Uh, an Oni? Oh no, not another one! Oh, uh, yeah. Not the one that robbed you, though. So, uh, <laughs> chill. I contacted you before, remember? I need your help. Oh, uh, right. Sorry. I'm still a bit on edge after the incident. <clears throat> so anyway, here's what happened. I was just out transporting some goods when a group of Ronin suddenly attacked me. It's not the first time that's happened to me. Usually, you just hand over some Mora and they'll leave you alone. At least you don't lose your goods that way. But this time was different. They weren't willing to talk things over. Instead, they took my things and they started coming for me! Huh? That's totally uncalled for! I got down on my knees and begged. Said I had a family to care for and that my business is our only livelihood. But then I saw that there was an Oni among the group. I thought he was going to be the one to finish me off. But instead, he stopped the others and told them to let me go. Yeah, that got them all arguing with each other. His cohort said that I was sure to retaliate if they released me. But the young Oni was insistent that they shouldn't lay a finger on me. Things got real heated. I thought they were going to come to blows. Luckily, they let me escape with my life in the end. And I scrambled to get myself here, where I'd be safe. <sighs> I never want to set foot outside of here again. So he'll steal, but he won't harm people. <laughs> Seems he has some sort of standards. Did he say why they were robbing you? Surely it was Mora, right? What else could they have wanted with me? I mean, I can't say for sure. It's not like I asked. But what I did hear them say was, the goods are worth more than the merchant's life. Or something like that. Ugh, that idiot Oni. Do you have any idea where they went after they robbed you? I have no clue. But I think they're pretty active in the Tatarasuna area. 
You aren't gonna go after them, are you? Seriously, I'd advise against it. There are too many of them, and they're all heavily armed. Ah, don't worry. It's just a bunch of no-name scumbags. I got a whole laundry list of scores to settle with them. If these two islands are where they tend to hang around, we're sure to run into them at Nazuchi Beach sooner or later. Time to go. Clear weather all around brightens the heart. I follow the wind. They gotta pass through here sometime. Let's just hang tight for a while. If I'm not mistaken, they'll be showing up any time now. Yeah, things might get a little rough, so we better be prepared. Oh, here they come! Yeah, there they are. And one of them has horns. All right, it's go time. Let's get them! Let's get down to- Looks like you fellas aren't going down without a fight. Fine by me. Let's fight first, talk later. War! See no more! <laughs> Bam! There's war! To the fairy. Can't catch me! Let's get down to business. Who wants some of this? Hey, don't even think about running. It's me, Arataki Ito, descendant of the Crimson Oni. <laughs> I know who you are. From the day we are born, every blue Oni knows their purpose. We all know our fate is one of self-sacrifice. But what about the Crimson Oni, hmm? You don't know anything about us. Not our miserable history, or any of our names. Mine's Takuya, by the way. But you don't even care, do you? Because those who get sacrificed should be forgotten, right? No, you're wrong. I never knew the Blue Oni had survived to this day, and the moment I found out, I was determined that I would find you. Since you remember the pact between our two factions, I assume you also remember the pride we share as Oni. So my question is, how could a proud Oni like yourself go and abuse the weak and plunder the innocent? Why break the oath that our kind swore all those years ago? <laughs> What's so funny? Who are you to talk about pride and oaths with me? The Blue Oni gave up everything just so the Crimson Oni could live peacefully in human society. But let me ask you, Arataki Ito, what exactly do you contribute to human society? You're a blundering fool who can't hold down a real job. A laughing stock of the town, and worse still, you let them get your vision during the vision hunt decree. Protecting the Oni pride? Huh! 
You wouldn't know how if you tried. You're a disgrace to the only kind. Hey, come on. None of that stuff's a big deal. I, I mean, you're, you're really hanging me out to dry here, man. Since when do you care what other people think? You just do whatever you want. It's not like anyone can stop you. But do you have any idea of the kind of life my kin and I have lived while you've been hanging around in human society? We were cut off from the rest of the world. We severed all contact with it. And since then, we've had no place to live, no stable source of food, no clothing, no medicine, nothing. Besides the oath we swore to uphold in our so-called Oni pride, we had nothing. So that's why you joined a band of thieves? That's right. Why should I accept that life? Is holding fast to a worthless oath supposed to help me provide for my family and friends? I've abandoned our Oni pride. It's meaningless. I want to live. I've given everything that I've stolen from humans to my community. What I've taken will at least keep them from starving and ease their pain. That's what matters most to me. Yeah! And besides, the Blue Oni sacrificed themselves so that Oni could be accepted as part of human society. If people see Oni causing trouble again, then that'll defeat the whole purpose of the sacrifice you made! <laughs> You make a good point. But Arataki Ito's the one who needs to get that into his thick skull. The Blue Oni are the bad guys, so we're expected to do bad things. Our actions won't tarnish the reputation of the Crimson Oni. Unless, of course, this bonehead decides it'd be a great idea to take all the blame for himself, completely destroying the trust between humans and the Crimson Oni in the process. He's the one that wasted the sacrifice we made. Huh? Well, I only had to do that because of you! I couldn't just stand back and let the Tenryo Commission drag you away! You should get your priorities straight. The Blue Oni are history, alright? Forget about us. The Crimson Oni are the ones who must live on. Why couldn't you have just stayed out of this? There they are! Seize them! Oh no! It's the Tenryo Commission! <sighs> Forget it. This was a waste of time anyway. I don't expect you to understand me, but you could at least take a look in the mirror sometime. Hey! Hey! You got away! Uh-oh! We need to get out of here, too! <clears throat> we can't get caught here. Looks like I'm up to bat. Just wait here, and we'll escape together when the time's right. Whatever you do, don't attack any of the Tenryo Commission, or they'll be after you too. Who goes there? Ah, boy. Get them! Come on, man. He won't get away this time. Just give yourself up, Arataki Ito. Let's roll! Yeah! You cannot match my bravery! Only coming through! I won't forget this! Man, they really came out in force today. I'm kind of flattered the Tenryo Commission sent so many. But I still haven't completely recovered from the bean attack earlier. I'm starting to lose my edge here. No, no way. All that would do is send them after our Blue Oni friends instead. But I have to settle things with them first, man to man. Then what should we do? The Tenryo Commission's about to arrest you! Uh, no choice but to keep kicking some Tenryo butt! Hey, boss! Thought you'd have all the fun without us? Granny Oni sent us. We're here to lend a hand. Maybe we can't take him, but we can sure slow him down. Now's your chance. Go! Hey, I told you to stay out of this one. Well, we're in it now. Come on, there's no time. Go, do what you gotta do, boss. 
<laughs> All right, then. Watch yourselves. As soon as I'm done, I'm coming back for you. Come on, you two. Time to roll. Don't let them get away. After them. Hey, you guys want some of this? There's plenty to go around. Run for it, boss! As boss of the Arataki game, being rescued by my own boys feels pretty humiliating. I promise to never let you down, boys. All right, we've got some footprints to follow. Let's find Takuya. It was real touching and all what they did, but those few guys weren't much of a gang. There are more footprints here. They should be just up ahead. Hey, it takes Mora to run a gang, okay? They're all I've got. For you. Huh. Is it just me, or are there more and more footprints here? At least we know we're headed the right way. Let's see what else we can find ahead. cart and some goods look alive we've got company nice and spicy. go ah. sacred name fortune preserver wind strike clouds high the birds come that hurts to the very Seems they definitely don't want us going any further. Let's see what's waiting for us up ahead. Huh. Besides the footprints, there are other signs of life here, too. Must be plenty going on around here. Let's investigate. They couldn't have just disappeared into thin air. <laughs> yeah, unless they're all ninjas or something. Hidden entrance. Yes! All right. I think we just found their hideout. This is going to be where they keep all the people they took. Takuya's probably in there as well. Huh? Uh, oh, uh, fire away? <laughs> of course I did. Come on, I'm not that dumb. But it takes a world-class blockhead like Takuya to think his ideas are actually gonna work. So I'm here to save him no matter what. Huh? What were you two talking about? Are you keeping Paimon in the dark again? <laughs> uh, let's go. by less than legitimate means, no doubt. All the more reason we gotta put an end to this. Can't reach 
No problemo. That'll be what this mechanism's for. To the fairy. What did I tell you? Just trust my instincts. Let's get down to business. Can't catch me. Be holding on to them for leverage. All right, let's get them out of here. Let's roll. See no more. My blade. It's showtime.
Mike, you're all free to go now. Quick, get to safety. Sorry, but have you seen our little boy? We're awfully worried about him. Calm down, dear. We don't even know if he was taken here or not. Have you seen him? Where is he? Is he all right? Don't worry. He's safe and sound. Someone's looking after him now on Yashiori Island. I can show you where on the map. He's been worried about you. I bet he'll be relieved to see you. You were the one who saved him? Oh, thank you, thank you! <laughs> no, no, please, no. No need to thank me. It's, it's my pleasure, really. It's just who I am. It's what I do. Before you go calling me a hero, let me ask you this. Wouldn't any other self-respecting guy who saw another person in danger have done the exact same thing? Really? Just one little compliment and it goes straight to his head. <sighs> These vagrants are insatiable. They'll do anything for money. No one dares stand up to them for fear of what they might do. Well, would they really do anything drastic? Um, no, actually, because... One of the guys, uh, the one with oni horns on his head, has always shielded us so far. Oh, in fact, his horns look just like the ones this guy has. At night, he would secretly bring us food and water. I don't understand what he was trying to do. Are you a friend of his? Or perhaps a relative? Uh, relative, I guess. Oh, maybe there's something secretly troubling him. He seemed different from the rest of the gang. They seem like heartless crooks, but I'd say he comes across more like a confused child who made some poor choices. Uh, let me put it this way. There are a few things he needs to straighten out in his head, and I'm here to point him in the right direction. I'm glad to hear that. He's lucky to have family like you. <laughs> Don't worry. He'll be in my trusty hands. I'll help him see the light. Anyway, you should scram. It's still not safe here. Yes, thanks again. You've rescued our entire family. We are indebted to you. Huh. A child that made some poor choices. Anyway, let's get going. While we still have time. Place. The jig's up! Surrender while you can! Adorn my knight! Oni, coming through! Finally, I see no more! Orders given. Orders received. Life goes on. secret a long time ago i picked up this rare paper charm it's very precious to me what makes it so special is that if you tear one piece the other piece starts tearing too uh newsflash don't care about your cute little origami obsession you better stay where you are and let me finish aren't you curious what the other piece is used for I'll tell you, it's now the critical component of a mechanism, and when it gets torn, this place goes up in smoke. Yeah, the whole hideout is rigged with explosives and ready to blow. What? You're gonna blow this whole place up? Oh, don't worry about me. I made sure that I've got an escape route. The rest of you, though, you're gonna be buried deep among the rubble. You've had your fun. 
Now it's goodbye. Uh, uh, oh, my paper charm. Where's my paper charm? Oh, I'm sorry. Are you looking for this? Yes, that's it. But when did you? I snatched it earlier to stop you from doing anything hasty. Why, you? And now you're going to betray me? You're one to talk. What about burying everyone here? If you ask me, that sounds like you've already betrayed our agreement, no? <sighs> Just give it here! You done talking now? Huh? You sure? Great, because I'm done listening! Yeah. <sighs> Great work, Takuya. You arrived in the nick of time. Stay away from me. Uh huh? I said stay away, or I'll tear the paper charm. Hey, oh, okay, okay, uh, fine. Just calm down. What are you doing? Just because I won't let him blow this place to bits doesn't mean that I won't do it myself. Unless you want to get buried, you should leave this place now. Take everyone here and get out! <laughs> you won't go through with it. If you were that cruel, then why bother protecting every person you've come across? Huh? I'm not here to reason with you. Go! Just get out of here! This sacrifice is mine to make. Mine alone! Why couldn't you just stay out of it? No one needs to sacrifice themselves. All right. Then you tell me. What am I supposed to do? I've tarnished our Oni pride and abandoned our ancestors' oath. Only sacrifice can restore my pride now. I chose this path so I could provide for my fellow Oni. I was ready to die from the very beginning. This is between us blue Oni. But you... If it wasn't for you, everything would have worked out perfectly. They're here. We won't let them slip away this time. Hey, Tenryo Commission! I'm the one you're looking for! I did it! I'm behind everything! Arataki Ito is innocent! You're the ones in charge of detaining criminals in human society, right? I'm sure you can tell who the criminal is here. Huh? It's like he's trying to reenact the fairy tale! Sacrificing himself for the Crimson Oni! Ignore him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. It's me you've been looking for, and here I am! How are you ever gonna report back without capturing me? <sighs> Stop fooling around, Ito. Listen, Takuya. Sacrificing yourself won't solve anything. Your sacrifice can't protect me or your fellow Oni. And giving up your life isn't gonna make theirs any longer. Sacrificing yourself is one way to escape your fate, but the only one you'll be setting free is yourself. Listen to me. You wanna be the tough guy? Huh? Well, this is the coward's way out. Don't let your sacrifice stain our Oni pride. <sighs> the Blue Oni have been scraping the bottom of the barrel all these years, so let's give them a new beginning. We've made mistakes, but we can make up for them. Fate hasn't been kind to the Oni? Well then let's tear it up and start over! But before any of that can happen, you need to get yourself behind me and forget about all that self-sacrifice stuff. Now let's go, but we're not done talking about this. Uh, Takuya! I'll take care of this. There are still people in danger. Go, help them. What? <laughs> hey, I got this. Come on! Forget about me! Just go! It's what I deserve! Ah, oh, shut up, would ya?
that's gonna hurt tomorrow. Ugh. What's up with the looks on your faces? I said we'd be okay, didn't I? I'm sure I'd be looking a whole lot sharper right now if it wasn't for that brutal bean attack of yours earlier. Why? Why would you do this for me? I'm the guilty one here. I don't deserve this. Because we're Oni, that's why. We share the same blood, brother. Our parents and their parents before them never taught us that it was okay to abandon family in need. I just wish you'd come to find me sooner. If you knew about me all along, then you should have come and asked me for help. I never would have dreamed of turning you away. The blue Oni disappeared so that they wouldn't bring trouble to the crimson Oni. If I came to you for help, wouldn't that just undo everything the blue Oni have done? Not to me. I've always respected the blue Oni for their sacrifice. Nothing they did was in vain. It's only because of them that we have survived to see today, and built a world where Oni and humans can live side by side. Honestly, everything that I have now, I owe to the Blue Oni. And let me tell you, the Inazuma of today wouldn't see you as a villain just because of the color of your horns. You say all that, but... in spite of everything, you're barely getting by. <laughs> That's just how I roll, man. You remember the pack, don't you? We're not supposed to suck up to the humans. We're supposed to earn their respect. Every member of the Arataki gangs had a tough time trying to fit in. Take Akira, for example. He snores like you wouldn't believe. Or Genta. He's got a serious temper problem. And Mamoru? Well, he's colorblind. Even Granny Oni. She got that name for taking me in as a kid. We're all rejects and outcasts in some way, but we don't care. You want to talk about pride? Well, in our gang, we're proud to welcome anyone who's been through adversity with open arms. But... I... Ah, don't worry. The Arataki gang's already a bunch of misfits. You really think you could cramp our style? We've dealt with the Kairagi and the people they took captive. I assume the two of you are finished talking. Takia, based on the findings of our investigation, I hereby announce that you are officially under arrest for forceful seizure of people and property. Please do not attempt to resist. All stolen articles will be reclaimed. That means we'll be seizing all the goods you passed on to your kin. No, please don't. Without those goods, they'll... It's all right, Takuya. Those goods never belong to us anyway. Don't worry, I'll help take care of your kin. Now that I know the situation, I'll personally make sure they never suffer again. Might want to put your grand plans on hold there. You're under arrest too, for numerous assaults on the Tenryo Commission officers. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I guess I forgot about that. But no worries, I'll put my gang on the case. My boys will take good care of the Blue Oni. Yeah, we've already arrested them too. Oh, right, yeah, uh, uh... <sighs> That's what they get for resisting the Tenryo Commission. Yeah, I guess it's up to you then, Traveler. Could you be a pal and tell Granny Oni about the Blue Oni situation? <sighs> thanks. And thanks for sticking with me to the end. Once I'm out of the slammer, I'll find a way to make it all up to you. As for you two, lending them your aid when you knew full well they were in the wrong means that the culpability extends to you too. But, given your unique circumstances, and in light of the complexity of this case, we won't press charges this time. <laughs> Sorry for the trouble. Hey, wait! W are unique circumstances? W are these guys like a, a, a big deal or something? Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. Because I was going to say, you know, like, I, I, I'm kind of a big deal myself, <laughs> you know? Yeah, all right, uh, see you next time. Whenever that'll be.
Time to go. Time to go. Follow the wind. Time to go. <laughs> ah, yes. That does. So, did they take Uncle Ito away? Yes, they did. But don't be too upset, Daisuke. We will have the chance to see him again. He and his gang may have acted recklessly, but the fact remains that he still helped us. Yeah, I knew it! Uncle Ito helped us, and he's awesome! Now, don't get any ideas, Daisuke. Ito is a far cry from awesome. He still caused a lot of trouble for a lot of people. If you ask me, I'd say he's like one of those little Oni Kabuto you kids are playing with all the time. Though he looks fierce on the outside, he has a kind heart. He's not a delinquent, but he'll never back down from a fight. Uh, I don't really get it, but it sounds like a compliment. I can't wait for my next beetle fight with Uncle Ito. Thank you, Granny, for taking care of our little boy. I hope that Ito and his friends will be released as quickly as possible. Yes, you needn't worry. The officials in the Tenryo Commission will certainly exercise sound judgment. It's time we started heading back. We'll be sure to visit again soon. Ah, I'm glad that everything was resolved in the end. Things were looking quite dire, but now the future looks bright. Wonderful, wonderful. As for the Blue Oni, just leave them to me. If there's one thing an old granny like myself can do, it's caring for others. Do you need our help? <laughs> no, no. Go on ahead. I'm sure you have other adventures beckoning. Besides, once Ito is released, he'll be here to help me. Oh, yes. And you know what? I think that's what makes him adorable. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> He does whatever he puts his mind to. He's sincere, brave, and determined. Back when I took him in, everyone thought I was most unusual indeed. They started calling me Granny Oni, but I've never been ashamed of this name. On the contrary, I'm quite proud of it. Because Ito is my pride and joy. A long, long time ago, in a village lost to time, there lived a crimson oni and a blue oni. They were the best of friends. The crimson oni wanted to be friends with the humans, so the blue oni played the role of the naughty kid. And then he left. After a long time, the crimson oni was living happily with the humans, but in his heart, he wanted to bring the Blue Oni back home. 
The Crimson Oni didn't know where to find the Blue Oni. His search took him up the highest mountains and across the widest rivers. He found many traces of the Blue Oni, but the more he found, the clearer it became. The Blue Oni was hiding on purpose. So just as the Blue Oni had once done, the Crimson Oni left him a letter. Dear Owl, I've made lots of human friends now, and I want to have a big party for everyone. I want all my friends to be there. That means you too, Owl. If you don't want to meet me, you can just watch from a distance. The Blue Oni snuck back to the village and hid in the shadows. He saw the great feast and roaring fire and longed to join in. But though his stomach rumbled, the Blue Oni remembered the oath of old and kept his distance. Suddenly, he jumped! The Crimson Oni was right behind him! <laughs> hey, you're finally back! Come on, I'll introduce you. It's time everyone met my best friend. Astra Abyssosk. Welcome to the Adventurers Guild. Thank you for completing today's commissions. Here is your reward. Add Astra Abyss. The scenery is wonderful. Surely enough to con- Is anyone to become a wanderer?
Taking a stroll in the middle of a downpour certainly rouses the spirit. But it's best to dry your clothes as soon as possible after the rain stops. <laughs> Time to go. Time to go. Time to go. Time to go. Yeah. Clouds high. The 
Who says there aren't benefits to a life of wandering? There aren't benefits to a life of wandering. Time to go. Sacred name, fortune preserver. 
Wind strike. Yeah. Yeah. Two. Two. Out of the frying pan. It's as one with wind and cloud. Wind strike. Fallen leaves adorn my night. Wind strike. Taking a stroll in the middle of a downpour certainly rouses the spirit. But it's best to dry your clothes as soon as possible after the rain stops. Time to go. Your toast! Orders given. Orders received. Fallen leaves. Adorn my night! Wind strike!
Turned. Someone needs assistance. Huh. Huh. <laughs> Let's get down to business. Wind strike. Nice and spicy. Go. As one with wind and cloud. Wind strike. Time to go. Let's get down to business. I'm the right hand. Wind strike. Sacred name. Fortune preserver. Life goes up. Fallen leaves. Adorn my night. Wind strike. Time to go.
clear weather all around brightens the heart. Huh? So you don't have a vision after all. Seems like I've mistaken you for someone else. At the very least, you should make sure you've got the right person before you go attacking them. No, wait. Even when you've got the right person, you shouldn't go attacking them out of the blue. It's dangerous. Have you ever met someone by the name of Kaedahara Kazuha? He carries a sword just like you. I've also heard that he possesses an animal vision. That's none of your business. Huh. Never mind. You don't look like you know anything anyway. I'm wasting my time. What the heck is this guy's problem? Coming around here, waving that weird sword in our faces, and he didn't even apologize. Seems like a real nutcase. Well, one thing's for sure. No way are we telling him anything about Kazuha. Right? Paimon has a feeling, though, that even if this guy gets to challenge Kazuha to a duel, he won't be able to beat him. Anyway, just to be on the safe side, we should go fight Kazuha right away and tell him to watch his back. Oh? What kind of hunch? A special connection? You mean, beyond already knowing each other? Hmm... Yeah... Maybe a little... Uh, but then again, most people look pretty much the same once they start fighting, so that doesn't really prove anything. Anyway, there's no time to lose! Let's go tell Kazuha so we won't get into any danger! Paimon heard that the Crux fleet is stocking up in Rito at the moment. Let's look for him there! Time to go. Hey! Uh, hello? Do you know where Kazuha is? <laughs> You're looking for Kazuha too, huh? Guess he must have done something impressive after all. <laughs> 
Well, we took the small vessels into Rito on a routine supply run, only this time, as soon as we entered the harbor, we ran into a huge crowd of Inazumans, all of them wanting to know about Kazuha. If it's because of that battle on Nizuchi Beach, Captain Beto had a great run there too, but I don't see her getting this kind of attention. Kazuha keeps to himself most of the time. In fact, there are times when he doesn't even listen to the captain, but she just laughs it off. <laughs> oh, so you still don't know what he did. I've heard bits and pieces. Something about him blocking the Raiden Shogun's Muso no Hitotachi. Is it really as big a deal as everyone's making it out to be? Really? Wow. When you put it like that, it all makes sense. <laughs> In that case, his newfound stardom is well deserved. He was called away earlier by some people from the Tenryo Commission. They said they had something important to discuss with him. I thought they'd come to arrest him at first. Turns out they couldn't have been friendlier to him. Seems like they really respect the guy. Just a little while ago, this would have been completely unimaginable. Thank you. Guess we'll go pay a visit to the Tenryo Commission. All right, then. I'll just stay here and carry on trying to fend off the crowd. Oh? It's you. Greetings. We were just discussing the repealing of the Vision Hunt Decree. Since you're here, you're very welcome to listen in on the conversation. We invited Mr. Kaidahara here to extend a gesture of goodwill on behalf of the Shogunate. Your hard work has secured for us the agreeable state of affairs that we now enjoy. Also, I've been granted the chance to correct my clan's past mistakes, and for that, I'm deeply grateful. The Almighty Shogun has issued a large array of directives aimed at resolving, or at least easing, the tensions that have built up over the years. The Tri Commission has made the recommendation to use this opportunity to restore the honor of the Kaidahara name. Regarding the history of the Kaidahara clan, I trust that you're already somewhat informed? In short, there was once a group of select bladesmiths who served the Shogun directly, responsible for upholding and further developing the traditional blade-forging arts of the Almighty Shogun. The Kaidahara clan belonged to this class. But there came a time when some of these bladesmiths revolted and fled to Snezhnaya. Both the Kaidahara and Kamisato clans were held accountable for lax oversight and entered a period of great turmoil. We later learned that the whole misadventure had been secretly orchestrated by the Fatui, Attributing all of the blame to the Kamisato and Kaidahara clans was neither proper nor just. Considering Mr. Kaidahara has once more made an outstanding contribution to Inazuma, the Almighty Shogun believes he should not only be rewarded for his achievements, but also receive recompense for the excessive punishment borne by his clan in the past. In the interest of preventing further harassment of the bladesmith clans by the Fatui, we chose not to publicly release the findings of our investigations into these matters. We trust you can understand why this was necessary. This is a true honor. I am delighted to be in a position to receive the goodwill of the Almighty Shogun, and the Shogunate at large. However, would I be correct to assume that this magnanimous gesture does not come without some strings attached? I can assure you that nothing could be further from the truth. We seek only to correct a past injustice. With the Kaidahara clan's reputation and occupation restored, the Kaidaharas will be bladesmiths once more, and your wanderings will finally come to an end. You will be able to lead a safe and prosperous life in Inazuma City with the Almighty Shogun's blessing and full support of the Shogunate. I have grown accustomed to life among the elements. 
I fear I would no longer feel at home behind the tall walls of a stately abode. Yet my ancestors did indeed take great pride in the name of Kaidahara, and the art of blade-making for which it stood. I do have a responsibility to restore their honor. I sense some hesitation in your words. Should you accept this offer, I imagine many of the malicious rumors currently circulating through the populace will disappear. Malicious rumors? All we heard on the way here was so much praise that we almost wondered whether there was another Kaidahara Kazuha in town. Well, to some, the Muso no Hitotachi is something that can never be defeated. They cannot accept the idea that Mr. Kaidahara really parried the Shogun's strike. Also, eyewitnesses saw him using the power of Electro in addition to that of Animo. As a result, the falsehood that Kaidahara Kazuha was using a delusion began to spread. What? But that doesn't make sense. Using a delusion turns you old and frail, and Kazuha still looks fine. That is correct. However, to some people, the idea of a single person wielding two elements at once is a more inconceivable notion still. This is just one of many similar rumors. I am very uncomfortable with being the subject of public discussion, no matter whether it brings suspicion or stardom my way. But perhaps if the Shogunate is willing to publicly support me, this situation will blow over more quickly. This is precisely why I encourage you to give our offer some serious thought. It stands to benefit all of us. Hmm. Please allow me some time to consider. In fact, let us put this discussion on hold for the moment. Well then, what brings the two of you here? Yikes! We nearly forgot about the most important thing! Why would such a dangerous individual be looking for me? No, this puzzles me as much as it does you. My fighting forms were taught to me by my family based on techniques originally developed for blade testing. We undergo rigorous training to standardize every motion the blade is put through so that each can be fairly assessed for quality. Over time, these techniques came to form something of a Kaidahara sword art, focused on blade testing, but with a full repertoire of combat forms. Those forms are quite different from the more practical ones typically used by samurai in battle so it's hard to imagine that the similarity you speak of was coincidence alone. All the more reason to watch your back! This guy was a serious nutcase. Indeed. He sounds highly aggressive. Anyone he targets is at risk of serious injury. Or worse. In that case, I will send some men out immediately to search for him. Thank you. I must say, I am now very curious about this matter. And I will also need some time to consider your offer. I will first join the Traveler in investigating the one who attacked her, then give you a conclusive answer upon my return. Very well. Uh, please stay safe. Come on. Let's go and track down your aggressor. The detective agency knows the most about what goes on in town. Question. Do you 
know if anyone around here has been looking for him. Uh, for Kaidahara Kazuha, we mean. <laughs> Aha! So this is the renowned Mr. Kaidehara. I've heard a lot about you. It is an honor to finally meet you today. You are too kind. We are currently investigating an assault and would appreciate any help you can offer. Oh? You were targeted in an assault? Let me think. I can't seem to recall anything of immediate interest. Mr. Kaidehara is currently the talk of the town, so there are always a lot of people looking for him. To be honest with you, our detective agency has recently been receiving many inquiries from people wishing to obtain Mr. Kaidehara's personal information. Some of them were offering us millions of mora just to gather the information they want. If these were more legitimate commissions, Songo would have snapped them up in an instant. Even at that price, you probably still shouldn't. Please, accept my thanks for looking out for my privacy. Of course. No matter what, we only take on legitimate cases. We don't make our money by revealing details of other people's day-to-day -day life just for the sake of it. <clears throat> Sorry, I got a little off topic. What I'm really trying to say is, it doesn't surprise me that a complete stranger is looking for Mr. Kaedehara. But I wouldn't know where to begin if we want to connect this with an assault. Then let's put that connection aside for now. Have there been any other attacks or similar incidents recently that stand out as particularly unusual? The Tenryo Commission had very few leads, and I thought you might have some information from different sources. It's true that the Commissioners aren't clued up about every little thing that goes on out in the streets. But typically, it's only the most trivial events that manage to escape their attention. If anyone had been out there attacking people, that would be assault, in which case the Tenryo Commission would absolutely get involved. That, oh, that does make sense. Uh-oh. Looks like the trail's already run cold. I still find it difficult to believe that whoever attacked you hasn't been causing any trouble elsewhere. Few people possess your prowess in battle. So unless you were the first person he targeted, someone is certain to have been hurt by now. I am well aware of your talents. There is no need to be humble around me. In fact, I'm quite relieved that you were the one he targeted. It would cause me great grief to see someone become critically injured or lose their life because of me. For the poor victim, this would be a completely senseless crime. Don't worry, we'll find him. It seems you are every bit the selfless hero they make you out to be, Mr. Kaidehara. Surely this same concern for your fellow man is what drove you to fearlessly raise your blade against the almighty Shogun. You flatter me. Truth be told, I don't know quite what came over me in that moment. <laughs> you are much too humble. Don't worry, I completely understand your concerns. I will try my best to gather whatever leads I can for you. Oh, actually, there was one strange incident over the last few days. It doesn't involve an attack, though. Let me tell you about it just in case. Sure. During times like this, the more information we have, the better. All right, then. Recently, two people went missing from the city at around the same time. One of them is a pretty well-known collector, surnamed Nagato. The other, Amenoma Yuya, is a samurai from the Amenoma clan. Amenoma! Now there's a familiar name! Right. Yuya is the nephew of Amenoma Togo, the owner of Amenoma Smith. Two grown men going missing at the same time. Hmm. Their cases are likely connected, but I don't know much in the way of details. I recalled this because Amenoma Yuya is also an accomplished martial artist who is skilled with the blade. Perhaps he is the one you are looking for. Understood. Though it seems highly unlikely to me. I neither know this man, nor do I have any idea why he may wish to attack me. Sure! Can't hurt! We never know what we might find out along the way. Thank you, Ryuji. We'll start by making some inquiries at the Amenoma Smithy. Sounds good. 
All the best with your investigation. I'll get moving shortly myself. If it isn't Kaida Harakazuha, what brings you here today? Huh? You two know each other? Yes, the Kaida Hara and Amenoma clans were both members of the Raiden Gokaden. Historically, there have always been deep links between the two clans. After I returned to Inazuma, I visited Mr. Amenoma to pay my respects. Ah, let me quickly explain. The Raiden Gokaden was the collective term for the five most acclaimed bladesmithing arts in Inazuma. The techniques of blade making were personally bequeathed to the Raiden Gokaden by the Almighty Shogun, and over time, further honed and enhanced by the most talented craftsmen. Unfortunately, a series of events led to the gradual decline of many clans in the bladesmithing trade. Today, only the Amenoma clan has kept its art alive. <sighs> it is a great pity indeed. In the old days, we each had our specialties. And just as iron sharpens iron, so too did we learn much from each other. As an example, the Amenoma art strives to emulate the abiding patience and determination of water as it turns stone to sand. There is nothing mystical to our work, there is only practice, day in and day out, until both body and mind have memorized the craft, turning each motion of every technique into an intrinsic part of the bladesmith's life. As for the art of the Kaidehara clan, I believe it's called the Ishin art. That's right. Ishin art strives for complete harmony between blade and mind from the moment that forging begins. For only a blade thus forged can capture and convey its maker's thoughts and feelings, and eventually become an extension of its wielder's will. Indeed. Most samurai choose their blades, but an Ishin blade chooses its owner. You are, without a doubt, the most worthy wielder of an Ishin blade. It gladdens my heart to see that although the Kaidahara clan has fallen on hard times, its ideals and virtues are alive and well. You overestimate me. My actions are guided by my own personal sentiments, not by any noble aspirations on behalf of my clan. But let's get back on topic. The purpose of our visit today is to gather some information on your missing nephew. We hope to assist with the investigation. It may turn out that this case is connected to another we are pursuing. Ah, oh, yes. My nephew. <sighs> I reported the case to the Tenryo Commission, but I haven't heard anything back so far. He didn't say a word before he left, which is very unlike him. I'm still completely at a loss on what to make of it, but I've done what I can so far. Worrying is futile. All I can do now is wait for the news from the Tenryo Commission. We heard that there was a collector involved in the disappearance, too. Know anything about that? Yes. On the morning that Yuya went missing, he gave me a very cryptic look and said that he was going to give me a great gift. I believe he went to collect the item from Mr. Nagato after that. The next thing I heard was that a fire had broken out at the warehouse. And neither of them came back. Yes. Strange, isn't it? I wonder what could have caused it. Unfortunately, there was very little evidence left behind, so nobody knows what really happened. Hmm. Do you have any thoughts on what Yuya may have wanted to give you? If I had to guess, it must have been some kind of rare weapon. Otherwise, there would have been no reason for him to get my hopes up. He's never been particularly interested in blade forging, but has always had a fondness for blade testing. 
and can sense even the most minute differences in blade quality. He is extraordinarily talented in martial arts, particularly when it comes to the art of the sword. Truth be told, we have some information that you may find to be objectionable. The person we are looking for, he attacked this friend of mine. Based on the evidence we have gathered so far, only Yuya seems to match the suspect's profile. What? No. Absolutely impossible. Yuya is not that kind of person. He is humble and kind. Even his training is done with the goal of calming his mind. He has never gotten into a fight before. Huh. Is that so? Yes. If there's one thing I can say for certain... It's that Yuya would never draw his blade without a very good reason. But, with that said, it's equally out of character for him to just disappear with neither farewell nor fair warning. I also cannot know what course of action he might be capable of if coerced or otherwise compelled by circumstances unbeknownst to me. Anyway, should you find him, please let me know as soon as possible. Don't worry. You have our word. Hmm. From the sound of that, Hyman doesn't think Yuya was the one who attacked us as well. Yes. It sounds as if something happened when the two men met each other. Let's pay a visit to the Nagato household. Time to go. I'm very sorry, but we cannot afford to pay what we owe right now. My husband has gone missing, and I'm still trying to find him. No, no. You misunderstand us. We are here to help with the investigation. We'd like to ask you some questions about Mr. Nagato's disappearance, if we may. Ah, I see. I thought the debt collectors had come to visit again. I'm sorry you have to see me in this dreadful state. Has some new information come out? Do you know where he's gone? I'm afraid we don't have any new information at the moment. We're still trying to find out as much as we can to inform our search. With this in mind, can we perhaps ask some questions about your family's current situation? to understand why a collector would be strapped for Mora. <sighs> That's a long story. Ever since I've known him, he's been an avid collector of all sorts of things. He'd always get so animated when he was showing them to me. I knew nothing about the items myself, but seeing how enthusiastic and excited they made him, I was happy to believe that they were just extremely important to him. Everything was fine when we first got married, but as time went by, things changed for the worse. Uh-oh! What happened? He lost his sense of restraint. He started buying more and more things, and even resorted to borrowing money just so he could pay for them. Our expenses really spiraled out of control when he started getting interested in weapons. It was awful. There were days when he'd spend hours down at the warehouse, admiring his weapons even as debt collectors were descending upon our house. He wouldn't sell them, wouldn't even touch them. Just sat there staring at them like he was in a trance. I'm happy he has a hobby and I'm willing to support him, but making ends meet has to come first. I've tried talking to him about it so many times, but he never listens. On the last day that I saw him, I gave him an ultimatum. I said, if he refused to sell his collectibles and pay off his debts, I would divorce him and take the children with me. Whoa! And that led to an argument. Actually, it didn't. Generally, he's a quiet man who likes to go with the flow. On most things, he leaves the decision-making to me. 
You must understand, I never would have dreamed of threatening him with divorce if the debts hadn't pushed our family to the brink. After I said those words, he froze and was silent for a long time. When he finally spoke, he awkwardly mumbled that he would pick out a few items to sell. His voice was so meek and pitiful that I felt an urge to take everything back. But then what? If I didn't draw the line, what would happen to our family? Had I not indulged his bad habits, we wouldn't have found ourselves in such a predicament. And I also don't know if he had actually come to his senses, or if he was simply angry with me. The next thing I heard was that our warehouse had caught fire, and both he and the buyer had gone missing. I see. I understand. Amin Omiyuya came to purchase a weapon from Mr. Nagato. During the sale, a fire broke out at the warehouse, and both men disappeared. At first, I assumed they must have gotten into an argument over the price. But my husband has never been one to negotiate. He never even haggles when he's out buying groceries, so it's hard to imagine him getting into a fierce argument. Hmm. Maybe he was feeling the pressure from the debts? I don't know. He just disappeared after the warehouse burned down. Perhaps he's too afraid to come home now that all his collectibles have been lost in the fire, and he's got no way to pay off our debts. <sighs> Even though I'm still a little mad at him, we're a family, and I want us to face our family's crisis together. As long as he's willing to turn over a new leaf, I know we can work things out. Please don't get upset. There could be more to this situation than meets the eye. If collecting things is a habit that Mr. Nagato had his whole life, it is quite unusual for this habit to change so drastically over a short period. But the information we gathered from the other side suggests Aminomayuya is also a mild-mannered man who would not be likely to start an argument. Hmm. This situation is getting a little confusing. A little confusing? More like completely mystifying! Let's try a change of scenery, and see if we can piece together what we've learned. Rest assured, we'll notify you if we find anything. <sighs> Thank you so much. I just want him to come home. Based on the information we've gathered so far, I can only surmise that the sales meeting between the two men was somehow the catalyst for their disappearance. The fire at the warehouse likely played a part in how the situation unfolded, though its exact role is a mystery. Do you have any thoughts? Uh, um, well, Pina was thinking that maybe someone accidentally knocked over an oil lamp and, um... Nope, never mind. Paimon's brain needs to rest for a while. Over to you! That is the most likely conclusion based on everything we know. What started as a disagreement over the price escalated and ultimately turned into a tragedy. However, in this case, only one of the parties would have started the fire. That would make the other party innocent, and they would have no reason to hide themselves from the public. If this is indeed what happened, and the innocent man hasn't come forward yet, then it suggests they may have already lost their life. One fact that I keep coming back to is that Amenoma Yuya is polite and well-mannered, while Mr. Nagato is introverted and passive. Neither seems like the type of person who is inclined towards initiating conflict. Mr. Nagato, being heavily in debt, is also the only one of them with the potential motive to disappear after the fire. The more I ponder it, the more puzzling it becomes. Just what could have happened there? Right. Although the time frame seems to broadly match, no other details that we've learned seem to link the two events together. Amenoma Yuya lacks a key distinguishing feature of the attacker, Namely, that he is principally a practitioner of the blade-testing techniques of Amenoma art, not those of the combat-oriented Ishin art. Darn! We thought 
we could get two birds with one stone here, but at this rate, it's starting to look like a wild goose chase. Hmm. Let's keep going, since we've come this far. If we can solve the case, both Mr. Amenoma and Mrs. Nagato will be able to get some closure. Okay, but where should we go now? Let's head out of the city and check out the warehouse. There's still a chance we may be able to find some shreds of evidence. Wait. I hear something ominous in the wind. Oh! This must be another one of those sounds that only you can hear. As sketchy as that whole thing seems, you did put it to good use when we were chasing down that vision thief at Beto's tournament, so... Hmm. Now I'm picking up a strong scent in addition to the sound. It's right around here somewhere. Nothing here. It's gone now, but I can still sense the direction it left in. It felt very much like that ancient presence in Inazuma, the remnants of the Tatarigami. Indeed, but this unexpected spring of inauspicious energy may prove to be of benefit to our investigation. We should remain vigilant and approach slowly. So it's an underground warehouse. The force is definitely coming from down below. The source of the Tatarigami energy has long since left this place. But the residue it left behind still hasn't dissipated completely. Judging from the concentration, I would have to conclude that the Tatarigami source resided here for a very long time. Mrs. Nagato said her husband used to hang around the warehouse by himself a lot. It could well be that he was already under the influence of Tatarigami energy at that time. From what I've been told, Tatarigami does not turn all upon whom it preys into violent monsters. But most will develop a stubborn streak upon being exposed to the Tatarigami's unfulfilled will. Their interests become fanatical obsessions. Mr. Nagato had an interest in collecting to begin with. The influence of Tatarigami could explain why he became an obsessive hoarder, amassing more and more possessions, even as he put himself in grave debt. Um, so what should we do now? Go down and take a look? Step back. I'll open the door and take a look inside. If we don't open this door, we can move no closer to the truth. You needn't worry. Both of us have faced far greater dangers than this. Relatively speaking, the risk here is trivial. Ah. Hmm. What's down there? Everything's buried in debris. I can't see anything. It looks like the fire caused a cave-in, reducing the entire warehouse to rubble. That was too scary! Paimon was so sure that the warehouse boogeyman was about to jump out at us! All we can do now is keep searching in the direction that the Tatarigami energy source left this place. Two ordinary humans, entangled with the Tatarigami. I fear much misfortune has already befallen them. Yes, let's go. If nothing else, it's vital that we find out where this Tatarigami energy is coming from. Quiet your mind and focus on what you sense around you. Perhaps you too 
will perceive its ominous presence in the wind. From this point, the trail appears to split into two. The main source of the Tatarigami energy continued on into the distance, but a small portion remained here and seems to be dissipating slowly. <laughs> Quite possibly. Let's search the area. Something seems to be drawing their attention. Let's take a closer look. Rise. Clouds high. The birds come. the looks of it, a letter, written on a piece of torn clothing. The ink is bone dry. It must have been written quite some time ago. Well, let's take a look. Mm -hmm. According to this letter, a conflict arose because Aminoma Yuya wanted to seize a blade belonging to Mr. Nagato. Yuya started the fire that destroyed the warehouse and wounded Mr. Nagato in the fight. Mr. Nagato kept chase as long as he could, eventually stopping here to write this letter when his strength gave out. So, where is he? He was not only mortally wounded, but also under the heavy influence of Tatarigami. Add to that the fact that its aura seems to have attracted a horde of monsters and... I'm afraid he may no longer be with us. Whatever traces there may have been of his fate beyond after this point, they've since been disturbed by the hilly churls. There's nothing more for us to find here. Yes. Right now, we need to uncover some more important truths. If Aminoma Yuya is attacking other people indiscriminately, then the longer we take to find him, the more people risk meeting the same tragic end. Right. So let's moving I wouldn't be surprised if he too fell prey to the influence of the Tatarigami for a practitioner of the martial arts the easiest desire to inflame would be their pursuit of further power and skill all the clues that at first seemed disparate and disconnected it seems that now we know the thread that runs between them I have a hypothesis that if it's correct not only explains the series of events leading to the two men's disappearance, but also zeroes in on the attacker's identity. Wait! You figured it out? So these two cases are connected after all? I believe so. But it's something of an outlandish idea. I will only be able to confirm my suspicions once we've met him in person. On with the search. We must stay vigilant. At any point now, we may find ourselves in danger.
seems to have stayed here for a long time. Why here? Is there anything special about this place? I'm not sure. But on closer examination, I sense that the aura may have lingered here at several different points in time. <laughs> Show yourself! It's no use hiding anymore. Hmm. Kaede Harakazua. It's you, at last. Aha! So it is the same guy from before! What's your problem, huh? What could you possibly have against Kazua? Indeed, there should be no enmity between us. If it is Amenome Yuya that stands before us. But what if instead of facing Amenome Yuya, we are in fact facing the blade in his hand? Now that you mention it, it is giving off a strange light. Whoa, whoa! Surely you don't mean... Are you serious? Tatarigami energy often lodges itself within physical objects, then works to subtly affect any living organisms in its vicinity. The blade has resided in Mr. Nagato's warehouse for many years, affecting his state of mind and more recently using the sail as a means to affect, or rather, as a means to occupy, Amenome Yuya's body. Hmm. You're sharper than I thought. You've already deduced the truth of the matter. Many, many years ago, I was forged by a famed bladesmith of the Ishin tradition. I was his pride and joy. In me, he placed all his hopes and dreams. As a descendant of the Kaidehara clan, you should be able to guess our greatest regret. I presume it has something to do with the Raiden Gokaden. Indeed. At that point in time, he failed to live up to the Raiden Shogun's expectations. In the end, all he could do was to flee the nation by sea on a ship bound for Snezhnaya. He was a bladesmith of great renown, a master of his craft. There was nothing that he could not accomplish. All he needed was more time and a little faith. And sure enough, in the end, he achieved what he had set out to do. All of his life's work, his wisdom, his skill. It culminated in his creation of me. He not only bestowed upon me the greatest of strength, but also endowed me with a consciousness of my own. In her conceit, the Raiden Shogun lost not only the single most perfect blade in the entire world, but also an irreplaceable achievement in the art of blade forging. So... swords can become conscious and control people? The people of the time in which I was born never believed I had that kind of power. They saw me as a mere blade, a sharp and well-crafted one, but in all other respects, an ordinary weapon. Hmm. But that gave me the opportunity to take action. After the death of my creator, I decided to leave Snezhnaya and began my long quest to return to the distant land of Inazuma. Moving from one person to the next, I controlled the minds of countless hosts along the way, each bringing me one step closer to my ancestral home. I seek but one thing, to face the full force of the Raiden Shogun's blade and prove my power, the might of Isin art! Ah, so Amenome Yuya was not your first victim. Tell me, what happens to those you've possessed when you've finished using them? My hosts? Who cares what happens to them? They are but tools that serve my mission. When they got tired, or injured, or unusable, I hopped to the next one in line. All I needed them for was to take me back to Inazuma. You're awful! After I returned to Inazuma, I decided to bide my time in Nagato's warehouse until Amenoma Yuya handed himself over to me on a silver platter. At long last, I'm approaching my journey's destination. By Amenoma Yuya's body, I have found you. And by your hand, I shall defeat the Raiden Shogun! 
Kaede Harakazuha, you stood against the Raiden Shogun's Muso no Hitotachi. There can be no other to serve as my host for what is to come. Now, give your body over to me! Opening box of Adept Idrex. Life goes on. Wind strike. <laughs> Leave it all to me. Nice and spicy. Feel of life. You're toast. Wind strike. Hi. Do not stand in my way, or I will strike you down too. Your bluff's fooling no one. You've lost. Lost. I can never lose. It is this body that has reached its limit. Nothing more. Even if you defeat me here, the one who falls will not be me, but this man. He is but a puppet that can be replaced. I can take a new vessel at will. The end result is the same. I will end this wretch's life before you can lift a finger. And even if I were to lose my physical form, it is but a small setback. My consciousness shall endure. By any means necessary and any medium available, I shall return and fulfill my destiny! Your fighting style. It is indeed the forms of Ishin art. But from your movements, I sense only hatred and arrogance, as well as a thinly veiled mania and despair. Really? You can tell all that just from his moves? As I've mentioned before, the forms of Ishin art convey the user's thoughts and feelings. Since the blade is currently possessing Aminoma Yuya's body, its movements express the innermost thoughts of the blade. If you ask me, the mania is probably due to your desperate, single-minded ambition. You believe I am your only hope. Are you trying to claim that I am helpless without you? On his deathbed, he passed to me all of Ishin Art's secrets. The little that you know barely scratches the surface. In that regard, why would I ever need your help? Because all of that is in the past. I've been wondering why you've not caused more trouble in all the years that you've been in Inazuma. If you are indeed a cursed blade that can possess its owner. Now that I've seen inside your mind, everything finally makes sense. You weren't biding your time. You were trapped. Hmm. After all the time that's passed, you have grown weak. To the point that you are now unable to acquire a new host without making physical contact. Oh, that's right. Paimon remembers now. Mr. Nagato had a habit of never touching his collectibles. Only when Mr. Nagato witnessed his wife's distress and decided to sell his collectibles, did you finally have an opportunity to reach out to Aminoma Yuya and make your escape. <sighs> and what of it? Well... That brings me to my second point. There's a despair in you that is so strong it threatens to overwhelm you. You were determined to fulfill your maker's ambition whatever the cost. But this ambition is too grand and too heavy for you to bear. Each step you have taken has come at a great cost. I think you realized your limitations long ago. The more you clenched your teeth and pressed forward, the greater your fear of losing everything you had achieved grew, and the more you wished to run from the truth. But the way I see it, what began as an ambition has long since become a delusional fantasy. What would you know about any of this? I'm just one step away from achieving my goal! You returned to Inazuma to prove the unparalleled brilliance of Ishin art. 
But to make this arduous journey, you committed countless atrocities and showed a blatant disregard for human life. Even if you were to sever that divine light, is this truly the outcome that your maker would have desired? You... Sure, you inherited the secrets of Ishin art. But even as you made your journey to honor this legacy, you treated the ones who wielded you as mere tools to do your bidding. How could you possibly unleash the full potential of Ishin art when you act in perfect discordance with the principle of harmony between a blade and its bearer? Silence, you blabbering fool! I must achieve my goal. This was his life stream, and the very purpose for which I was brought into being! I will concede that you are most perceptive. You see my predicament clearly. But you also underestimate my resolve. And you should face reality. Easy for you to say. Facing reality offers me nothing. I have no need of anything that would stand in my way. Not hesitation, not self-reflection, and certainly not your so-called reality. It is pointless to argue further, descendant of the Kaidahara clan. If you wish to save this man, then offer me your body in exchange. How stubbornly you stick to your wayward path. I do not believe for a second that you can challenge the almighty Shogun in your current state. So let us make a bet, and I will put your strength to the test. What? Surely you're not planning to agree to his demands. Very well. Then find yourself some enemies with whom you wish to cross blades. A taste of my power will more than convince you. Once we have dealt with them, we shall proceed to Tenshukaku. And as for your end of the bargain, if you lose, you must release Aminoma Yuya from your control. I accept. Don't do this, Kazuha! This is the only way to save Aminoma Yuya. If we don't do this, he'll forever be the Blade's puppet. The Cursed Blade's strength is currently very weak, and I sense he's hesitating. This suggests his heart is still not completely devoid of honor. The power of the Tatarigami lies in intensifying existing obsessions. This is the reason Mr. Nagato and Aminome Yuya fell prey to it. Since I don't have any similar kinds of obsessions, I should be able to put up some resistance for a while. But even so... Even if things take a turn for the worse, I still have you both here with me. We have a chance here to save an innocent victim. I am willing to accept the risks entailed. Your disdain for me betrays your woeful ignorance. I agreed to this bet because there are things I wish to learn, too. Now, take me in your hand. I'm okay. I felt a little dizzy at first, but only for a moment. It's all right. So far, this was as I expected. I will. Thank you. What should we do next? Have you got a plan, Kazuha? We find some enemies. Although this blade has endured much turmoil, it probably hasn't experienced many real fights. If a blade built for Ishin art cannot enter a state of harmony between blade and bearer, it cannot unleash its true power. If he wants to avoid reality, then we need to fight until he has no choice but to face it. He shouldn't last long in an intense combat situation. Wait a minute! Paimon remembers hearing about something from the Adventurer's Guild. Since the Takatsukasa clan abandoned that secret base, it's been held by Ronin ever since! Ah, all right. Please lead the way. What about Aminoma Yuya? 
What should we do with him? The blade says he'll let Aminoma Yuya trail us silently. Although he hasn't regained his own consciousness yet, he is not in any immediate danger. Are we sure this is a good idea? It's a pretty treacherous journey. Okay, fine. Just be careful. Leave everything on this journey to me. As one with wind and cloud, wind strike. <laughs> I'm all right. The blade is performing largely as I expected. Having gone so long without proper use and maintenance, it's become very difficult to use. Though he's making every effort to persevere, I do not think he can last much longer. Hmm. Something else on your mind? How strange. Rather than trying to control me, he is instead trying to match my fighting rhythm. Let's keep going. sense that his strength is slowly fading away. The blade is becoming more and more difficult for me to wield. He cannot hold out much longer. If he keeps persisting, he will likely break apart at any moment. But what would that do to Aminoma Yuya? I will be careful with it. He also says he does not have any plans to give up easily. He's still trying to achieve his goal. Clouds high. 
Yes. And it looks like he's reached his limit. The sheen's grown a bit dimmer again. It doesn't look anywhere near as impressive as it did at the start. Perhaps this time, we'll finally have a chance to see his true form. True form? What are you talking about? Uh, huh? What the? Is this the same blade as before? It looks like a piece of junk! If you choose to continue in the state you're in, you wouldn't even be able to beat Samurai and Kairagi, much less the Almighty Shogun. Maybe you did truly wield power to rival the Shogun's light when first forged. But the long journey from Snezhnaya back to Inazuma has left you battered and broken. It barely needs stating anymore. Your ambition is a flight of fancy. I finally figured out why it was that you agreed to my bet. You wanted to reach a state of harmony with me. For perhaps then, you would still be able to wield commendable power. But regrettably, we are nothing alike. I will never understand your obstinacy and cruelty, nor can I empathize with the one who made you. The only one who truly understood you had already passed away by the time you were born. Huh? What's that supposed to mean? There they are! Take them down! Don't worry. I'll use my own blade. It's just more of the same. It's not a lucky day! Wind strike! This will do! As one with wind and cloud! You fought way better with your own sword. <sighs> you are a true Kaidehara in flesh and in spirit. Though we fought briefly together, you have seen me for who I really am. No one knew anything of my story throughout my travels, nor did I tell it to anyone. You are the first person to know the truth. I thought that if I could achieve Ishin harmony with you, perhaps there would still be a ray of hope for me. But in this too you have failed. Indeed. No matter how hard I tried, I could not attain that perfect harmony that your personal blade does with you. Too much time has passed. My physical state is poor and without proper maintenance. I can only disguise my true appearance behind an outer sheen. Yours is the blade that took on the Muso no Hitotachi. And what a magnificent blade it is. Perhaps I shall never reach that level of glory. Actually, this is just a generic blade that I picked up during my travels in Liyue. Wh what? Forging and maintenance are both important for a blade, but they are not everything. This blade has traveled the land with me for many years, and we have formed a close bond during that time. Plus, in the moment that I most needed it, I received aid from another power. Skill, blade, determination, and desire. All these must be aligned in the practice of Ishin art. <sighs> There is something else I must tell you. Though your maker may not have been aware, your ability to possess your own consciousness derived from the power of the Tatarigami. Tatarigami is a malevolence from the ancient past. It is the source of your mania and savagery. Though you tried to cooperate with me while I was wielding you, the part of you driven by Tatarigami was constantly trying to seize control of my body. <sighs> I sensed it, but I couldn't change it. It is an integral part of my consciousness. 
I resisted its temptations because I wanted to save Amenoma Yuya. But I do not know whether you yourself have any intention of trying to fight it. I feel a great sense of regret for you. Since you embarked on a journey bound for a destination you were destined never to reach. The moment you embarked on this journey, you lost the only person who could have ever unleashed your true potential. And yet there was no way for you to turn your back on his ambition. You have known this for a long time. It is the true source of your despair. He gave me everything. My life, my form, my consciousness, and purpose. How could I possibly deny him his wish? I said to him, Do not worry, from here on I shall forge your legacy. How could I go back on my word? Aww. I believe our bet is now settled. I have nothing further to say. Where are you going, Kazuha? He now has neither the ability nor the motivation to cause further harm. Let's give him some time to reflect on things. When I touched the hilt for the first time, it's as if I was transported to a strange dimension. It was somewhere I've never been. A bladesmith lay quietly on the bed, his frail face barely visible under the moonlight. His breaths were weak, and his life near its end. A newly forged blade lay by his side, listening attentively to his final words. Wow. That was the blade's memory, wasn't it? Indeed. While in exile in Snezhnaya, the bladesmith eventually learned the truth behind everything that had happened. The Ishin art had been dealt a devastating blow by the desertion of its best smiths. He spent the rest of his life in the forge, not to vent his frustration and hatred, but to atone for his actions. He felt intense regret at being tricked by the Fatui, but he could never again return to his homeland. His sole wish was to one day return his single, proudest creation back to the land of his birth. So he instructed this sentient blade to find a way back to Inazuma, no matter how long or how hard the journey. But he never wished to rival the gods. All he wanted to show was that they once shone brilliantly as Blade and Smith. That they were still worthy of being trusted. So that's the true story. But after that, the blacksmith's intentions were worked by the Tatari Gami, slowly turning his proud creation into the cursed Blade of today. Right. I believe the bladesmith might never have known that the power he worked with was that of the Tatarigami. The hatred within that power is what sent the blade down its ill-fated path. This blade has committed unforgivable atrocities, but only because it lost its original master. No one was there to correct its errors when it was losing its way. <sighs> Shame it's too late now. Yes, it is too late. Time would not wait or stop because of his determination. While the world moved on, his ambition remained stubbornly stuck at that fleeting moment at the dawn of his journey. He seems to have calmed down, though. Let's go and check in. When I look back at the past, I can remember the day of my forging like it was just yesterday. I once told him that I would pay any price to fulfill his wishes. Such was the debt I owed to him for giving me the gift of consciousness. But darkness and slaughter numb the mind. Over time, I lost sight of the difference between gratitude and grudge. Not only did I fail to fulfill his ambition, I also defiled it. 
You are finally seeing reality clearly. Since we agreed to the terms of the bet, I will honor the agreement and release Amenoma Yuya. But I still cannot bring myself to forsake his ambition. It is the entire purpose for my existence. So, may I ask you to help me fulfill the ambitions of myself and my creator? Hey! Now you're adding yours into the mix, too? Jeez, don't push your luck, mister. It has to be done in this order. At least hear what I have to say. And if you don't agree, I will still release Ame no Mayuya, as promised. My physical form, as well as the knowledge I possess, should still be of some value to you. His attitude has grown a lot milder. What do you think, Kazuha? Should we give him a chance? Let's hear it. Thank you all. When I was first forged, my maker was already terminally ill. He told me that he had wanted me to have the grandest opening battle. Alas, after that, he never rose from his sickbed again. Nor have I ever had the chance to prove myself in battle sense. My fights were devoid of any noble meaning. They were merely the next step in my never-ending journey. The next in a long line of transgressions. You are a fine warrior. I would like to request your hand in battle and experience a true duel between samurai. Oh? And who would be the opponent? I will release Ame no Mayuya and restore his consciousness. Perhaps after that, you can convince him to commit to a fight with you. He must have plenty of reasons to both hate me and desire a good fight. Understood. Then let's start by waking him up and seeing if he has the stamina and will to fight. I see. He used my body to inflict harm on others. I utterly despise him and his actions. But since he stayed true to your agreement by releasing me, he must still have some remaining semblance of honor. If a duel can help to set this state of affairs in order, I am willing to put myself forward. I do not wish to be a mere victim in this story. There's no need to worry. We'll vouch for your innocence to the Tenryo Commission. Thanks for your help. Who knows how this would have ended without your intervention. All right, then let's move on. More Ronin could appear at any moment. We can't stay here. In any case, for a final duel, I think we should aim for a greater sense of ceremony. Time to go. This reminds Paimon a bit of the Crux Crash. Yep, we still can't let our guard down. Even now, Paimon has a sneaking suspicion that Blade hasn't told us everything. Still, even if he's way past the point of redemption, it's hard not to feel a teensy bit sorry for him. Are you ready? Ready? Okay. All right, then. Successor of Ishin Art, Kaidahara Kazuha. Successor of Amenoma Art, Amenome Yuya. Honored to cross blades with you. 
It is my honor also. Wind Strider. That hurt. The fallen leaves adorn my knights, wind strider. Thank you for the experience. Although he appears battered and broken, in your hands it seems he's regained a glimmer of brilliance. His sense of savage cruelty has completely faded away. But that same sense of determination remains strong. You also fought well. I'm sure he relished the experience. There are a few things that I shall leave him to tell you himself. I must apologize to you for all that has transpired. You need not seek my forgiveness, nor do I have the right to forgive you on your victim's behalf. It is too late for all of that. I do not wish for forgiveness. I only hope that you will see my transgressions as mine alone and not let them stain the legacy of Ishin art. I strayed far from the straight and narrow path, but the Ishin art still has a worthy successor in Kaede Hara Kazua. I beseech you, please understand this. Yes, I too trust Mr. Kaede Hara to do the right thing. Thank you, successor of Amenoma art. This blade has also told me that he has another wish. He would like to visit the Amenoma Smithy. Maybe we can go back there together. What does he want to go there for? I am not sure, but I think that all this is about to come to an end. Time to go. It's Yuya! You have returned! I am sorry to have troubled you. It's all thanks to them that I was able to return safely. A prized Ishin blade. Turned weapon that controls the human mind. <sighs> Considering their forging philosophy, this was indeed within the realm of possibility. This is a great pity. But I have some good news as well. Ryuji, from the Bantan Sango Detective Agency, tells me that they've found the missing Mr. Nagato. Really? Is he okay? Yes. Badly wounded, but he will live. And now that Yuya is back, it seems like the final ending to this story is a happy one after all. I think I know what you want to do. What's wrong, Kazuha? Is the blade whispering in your ear again? Yes. He said he wants to take control of me for a brief moment. What? No way! Hasn't it learned its lesson? He tells me that he's thought of another way to fulfill his maker's wish. And he assures me that he won't use my body for anything nefarious. I have decided to let him do it. Change your mind, huh? Thank you. I will explain my reasons later. Okay. I am ready. Let us begin. Please, stay true to your promise. Hmm. My power is 
Atlas almost spent. Without him, my eventual demise is inevitable. But if I abandon the future to give everything I have in this moment, my physical form can be forged anew. Everything? You mean... Yes. The cost is my entire consciousness. <laughs> still a chance for Ishin art. Once remade, I will be a valuable resource for your studies. Ishin lives on, and its finest hour is yet to come. Even if I am not the one to prove its might to the Shogun, as long as it is an Ishin blade, crafted by Kaedehara hands, it will still fulfill his final wish. Thank you, son of the Kaedehara clan. Over the years, my real name has been forgotten by all. I'm ashamed to utter it, yet it remains strong in my mind. Kagotsurube Ishin. This name is now yours to keep. Hm. Rest in peace. it had to be done in that order. His consciousness will disappear forever after fulfilling the bladesmith's wish. Kagotsurube Ishin. It was the first time I ever heard his name. It seems like deep down he disapproved of his own actions and thus chose to bury this name deep within his heart. Only in the final moments before his consciousness faded, was he willing to entrust it to another? Seems like he really, really wanted to fulfill his Maker's wish. The same fervent ambition that gave him the motivation to keep going forward also fueled the stubborn determination that blinded him to the path ahead. Speaking for myself, I'd rather see him recognize and atone for his mistakes than see him punished for them. I understand. Perhaps this is a flaw in my personality. I've always been captivated by grand aspirations. Hearing his wish to rival the Divine Light touched something inside of me. Just as the sight of those who fought to repeal the Vision Hunt Decree did, your quest to face the gods and trace your sibling inspires me in the same way. After everything I've seen, Perhaps these pursuits fascinate me a little more than they should. Oh, Kazuha. I will continue to support you from this point on. Know that you will have my assistance whenever you need it. Wait, shouldn't we also go update Kujo Kamaji? Oh, you're right. We need to tell him about the findings of our investigation. And it's also time to give him a response to the offer he made me. You've returned. I hear that the issue has been resolved. Uh, though this was a treacherous investigation indeed, we're most fortunate that no lives were lost. The Tenryo Commission has already attended to the danger at the warehouse. The investigation into Amanoma Yuya should conclude soon. I do not believe he will be charged with any crime. Wow, you sure kept your ear to the ground. Then we needn't recount all the details again. Now, as to your earlier offer... I wish to give you my answer. Please, take a look at this blade. What's this? Kagotsurube Ishin. A weapon crafted using a long-lost blade-forging art of the Kaidahara clan. 
By means of a series of fortuitous events, I was able to recover and restore him. I also promised him that I will continue to study and pass on the secrets of Ishin art. And so, it looks like I will likely continue with my journey across the nations, learning more about this blade as I go. Uh, I see. I understand. The Kaidahara clan has always been a family of bladesmiths, so it is only proper for me to continue on this path. Were I to accept your goodwill, I may find myself embroiled in conflicts between the Shogunate and Sangonomiya. That would not suit me. Uh, you misunderstand. That was most certainly not our intent. I am aware, but I still desire to continue walking my own path. Very well. I can understand. Then let's pretend this offer was never raised. However, if you should ever change your mind or find yourself in need of the Shogunate's assistance, please do not hesitate to inform me. Great. Thank you for your generosity. Where will you travel to next, Kazuha? Hmm. I'll probably take to the seas with Captain Beto again for now. As for my next destination, let's see where the wind takes me. Taking a stroll in the middle of a downpour certainly arouses the spirit. But it's best to dry your clothes as soon as possible after the rain stops.
Wherever in this world I roam, I carry memories of my home. This blade. It is the last link I have to the land of my birth. scenery is wonderful. Surely enough to convince anyone to become a wanderer.
crowd the youths around. And I know just the tune to accompany them, if you wish to hear it. Compared to the storms I've encountered out at sea, this is really quite tame. Leave it all to me. Huh? 
sacrifice. Clouds high. The birds call. Wind strike. Sacred name. Fortune preserver. As one with wind and cloud. Wind strike. says there aren't benefits to a life of wandering. Time to go. Wind strike. Boba, get them. Steady as stone. Life goes on. Clouds high. The birds call. Time to go.
Taking a stroll in the middle of a downpour certainly rouses the spirit. But it's best to dry your clothes as soon as possible after the rain stops. <laughs> Compared to the storms I've encountered out at sea, this is really quite tame. scenery is wonderful. Surely enough to convince anyone to become a wanderer.
Time to go. There are leaves around, but I know just the tune to accompany them, if you wish to hear it. I follow the wind. Time to go.
Time to go. Compared to the storms I've encountered out at sea, this is really quite tame. Fateful offer.
Wherever in this world I roam, I carry memories of my home. This blade, it is the last link I have to the land of my birth. Fallen leaves adorn my night. Time to go. Clear weather all around brightens the heart. <laughs> Follow the wind. a smile to my face. Wait! 
Here, let me help you. Taking a stroll in the middle of a downpour certainly rouses the spirit. But it's best to dry your clothes as soon as possible after the rain stops. Ah! <sighs> 